Hi everyone, my name is Jean Nu and I am a sustainability expert and I teach people how to live a low waste life while making it inclusive and accessible to everyone. Before we hop into the video, I just want to put out a disclaimer to say that the most sustainable and zero waste thing you can do is to use what you already have in your home. So before you start buying all these reusable swaps, which I love, I would first just recommend using what you have and then you can go out and buy a better alternative. My first tip is to replace the single use plastic wrap and actually use beeswax wrap. In 2019, 5.3 million Americans use 10 or more rolls of plastic wrap. Beeswax wrap lasts about a year. It just varies on how often you use it. It's just like plastic wrap in the terms of keeping the air out. So you can take any sort of produce and you can wrap it. I know if you're cutting something in half and you want to put it in the fridge, this can actually help to prevent the air from seeping in and helps it last a lot longer. I would recommend washing it with cold water because the beeswax can melt but it's very easy to clean at the end of the life all you have to do is compost it and it goes back into the earth which I love so it's definitely one of the best ways that you can reduce waste in your kitchen my next tip is to replace single-use Ziploc bags with reusable silicone bags according to a report in CNBC more than 1.3 billion tons of plastic will go into the world's oceans and land during the next two decades what I love about satcher bags is that they are dishwasher safe you can easily freeze them you can boil them. You can pretty much do anything with stature bags. And silicone is actually very stain resistant. It's tough and it's long lasting, which means you're gonna also save money because you're not buying something that's only gonna last for a couple months, but you're buying something that's gonna last for years. My third swap is to take dish soap that comes in plastic packaging and opt for either a bar or a concentrate. I'm in love with this dish block that is by a No Tox Life. They are based in LA and they hand make it. For me, it lasts about two months and I love that it's coming in a bar form because then there's no plastic packaging. All you have to do is either take a sponge or you can take a dish brush and simply just lather it and you're good to go and it just makes cleaning dishes so much easier and it reduces a lot of waste. So I always try to opt for dish blocks or concentrates. So for example, ET has a concentrate that you can just simply mix with water and it's super convenient. Another option is to refill at your local zero waste store. Again, I know not everyone has access to a zero waste store. If all you have access to is dish soap that comes in plastic, what I would recommend is buying the biggest bottle you can because then you're actually using less plastic overall. So it's okay that you're not perfectly zero waste. I'm not perfectly zero waste. There are ways that you can reduce your waste when it comes to buying items in plastic, which is buying the biggest bottle you can. My fourth tip is to ditch the plastic sponge and opt for either a plant-based sponge or you can buy a compostable dish brush. So sponges, typically you shouldn't keep them for too long because of the bacteria. So when you're throwing out plastic sponges, they're actually going straight to landfill. You can't recycle them. Versus a sponge like Squishful, which I've actually been enjoying it. It comes in a pack of three and they come dehydrated it and you just activate it with water and it kind of fluffs up it works just like any other sponge and what I like about it is that it's plant-based you can actually compost it at the end of life what I also love too is a dish brush which you can get from no tox life so the top is wood and then the bristles are plant-based it scrubs really really well and then it also is compostable at the end of life as well because it's plant-based my next swap is to replace dishwasher pods that normally come in plastic for ones that come in either car board or some sort of compostable packaging. According to the EPA, 14.53 million tons of plastic containers and packaging, which includes detergent containers, were generated in 2018. And of that number, roughly 10 million tons ended up in landfill. I love drops. Drops come straight to your door and they come shipped 100% plastic free. They come in these cute little boxes and they also don't contain any harmful chemicals, which is really great as well because not only is the packaging good, but I also want to make sure that it's good for me and for my home and for the products that are in it as well. My next tip is to switch from parchment paper to reusable silicone baking mats. And what I love about baking mats is that they're nonstick and they're super easy to use. So I usually will throw maybe some vegetables on there and put it straight into the oven. It's super easy to clean. You can even put it in the dishwasher as well. As long as you're taking care of them, they're gonna last you a very long time and you're gonna help divert waste from landfills. My next swap is to ditch the paper towels and use either paper towels that come from from bamboo or even better, reusable dishcloths. According to the National Resource Defense Council, more than 28 million acres of Canada's boreal forest has been cut 
down over the past 20 years. And a lot of the logging is driven by the US's single use paper products like paper towels, tissues, and toilet paper. So for me, when I first started my zero waste journey, I realized that I didn't need paper towels. Look at what you already have in your home. Don't go out and buy things that you don't need because a lot of times we can upcycle or reuse things that we already have. And then if there are certain messes, like there's something really gross on the floor and you don't want to use a reusable towel, which I completely understand, there are better alternatives. So instead of using paper towels, you can actually use towels from bamboo. Bamboo is actually more sustainable. It requires a lot less resources to produce and it grows really quickly. One of my favorite brands is Real Paper. They're actually black owned and I love their products. Those are definitely really great options. Another amazing swap is to ditch the single use aerosol cans that you would use for cooking spray and opt for a refillable one. When you buy sprayers, although they're convenient, they're actually pretty harmful for the environment because most likely these aerosol cans are going straight to landfill and not being recycled. I like using Misto because it's non-aerosol and it's easy to refill. You just add the oil and pump it up to build the pressure and that way you don't have to rely on chemical propellants. Another easy swap is to ditch the single-use plastic straws for reusable ones. According to National Geographic, in 2018, it was approximated that 500 million straws were used every single day in the US. Due to their size, straws are one of the most harmful polluters for marine animals because they can become entangled in them or consume them, which can sometimes be fatal. For the most part, I don't use a straw at all unless it's a smoothie. Now, I know there are some people with disabilities that require a straw, which I completely understand, but I think if you're someone that doesn't need a straw, I would just recommend don't use it. And if you really do want one, I would invest in a stainless steel straw or a bamboo one or a glass one. They have so many different straws out there now. And making sure when you're going out to restaurants, you ask for no straw. If you're in need for a new cutting board, I would opt for wood or bamboo instead of plastic. I love bamboo because it absorbs very little moisture. It withstands damage from knives and is more resistant to bacteria than other woods. Bamboo cutting boards can also be composted at the end of their life, which is great, but for the most part, your cutting board should last you a very long time if you take care of it. My next swap is to replace single-use tea bags as well as coffee cups and opt for either a metal tea infuser for tea or a French press for coffee. Not all tea bags are compostable. A lot of them actually contain plastic and they also emit little pieces of microplastic into your your tea. So usually what I do is I will go to a zero waste store and buy tea in bulk. And again, if you don't have access to a zero waste store, there are places online where you can buy tea in bulk and then you can just simply place it in a metal tea infuser. It's really cute as well. And I just love that you're able to reduce waste and you can also choose how much tea that you want to put in it. And then once you're done, what I like to do is just compost it. So I'll just throw the compost in the freezer. And then in terms of coffee, so if you have a Keurig, I wouldn't go out and buy a whole new machine. They actually have refillable coffee pods, which you can use. If you're on the lookout for a coffee maker, I would highly recommend opting for a French press over a typical coffee maker. What's great about a French press is that it doesn't require any filters, so it's completely zero waste. And then once you're done with the coffee grounds, you can upcycle it and make a body scrub, or you can simply compost it. Another easy swap is to replace nonstick pans that often contain harmful chemicals with either stainless steel or cast iron skillets. Most nonstick pans only last about two years. And so once you're done and you throw them out, they're just gonna go straight to landfill. But what I love about cast iron skillets specifically is that over time, as you season them and you have oils in it, it actually becomes nonstick. So it's a great alternative to a nonstick pan that is emitting toxic chemicals into your food. So I opt for cast iron and stainless steel, which are natural materials, which are great for cooking. I either low heat or high heat. Stainless steel and cast iron skillets can actually last for generations if they're cared for properly. The less items you're bringing into your home and the less items you're purchasing, it's just saving you money and it's also cutting down on waste. Another great zero waste swap is to not buy food in plastic packaging, but buy it in bulk. So I know not everyone has access to a bulk store, but what I would recommend is instead of buying maybe a single serving of something or something that's in a smaller package, I would try to find the biggest bag that you can because over Overall, that's going to be less plastic. If I can't find an item in bulk, what I try to do is find items that either come in aluminum or cardboard or glass because those are highly recyclable. But it's just thinking about how in your daily life you can actually just reduce waste here and there. And over time, you end up reducing a ton of waste that you don't even realize. My last kitchen swap is one of the most impactful, which is compost.
composting versus sending food to landfill. A lot of people think that when you throw your food in the trash that it just disintegrates, but actually because food needs oxygen to break down, it does not decompose because it's piled and piled on a ton of trash, so there is no room for it to breathe. It causes it to off-gas methane, which is about 20 times more potent than carbon dioxide. The way that I compost is I put it in the freezer because you don't want it to smell. I know some people will leave it out, but for me, I want to make sure there's no bugs or any issues like that. Another way is just to upcycle the food scraps before you even compost them. So if you want to take some vegetable scraps, you can actually boil it and make veggie broth, which I think is great because that's just going to reduce waste. As of now, I don't compost at home, but I take it to a farmer's market. And if you decide you want to compost at home, you can buy a composter and you can put it outside if you have access and you can make your own fertilizer. So there's definitely different ways that you can use food scraps instead of just throwing it in the trash, which will end up in landfill. So these are some of my favorite zero waste kitchen swaps. Let me know in the comments below what your favorites are. Are there any that I didn't mention that you love? I definitely want to know. I hope this was helpful and thanks so much for watching.